be in the book of Luke today, chapter 8. We're going to pick up on verse 41. We'll read down to verse 48. Pick up on. We're going to the book of Luke, chapter 8. Pick up on verse 41. Read down to verse 48. I don't hear any pages, Russell. If you're, if you're there, say amen. 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 Let's see what God's word has to say to us this morning. <clears throat> and behold, there came a man named Jairus. And he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house. For he had an only daughter about 12 years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes thronged him. Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you, and you say, Who touched me? But Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceive power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. We're in week four already of the sermon series that I, I, I called Sabotaged. What I'm going to be kind of focusing on today as we work through these passages, work through the sermon, I'm going to be looking at interruptions in life and disruptions to our life. None of us like to be interrupted in life. We certainly don't like disruptions to our life in any way. And I, as I was looking at this, and I was thinking about it, you know, none of us like to have interruptions, but not all interruptions are meant to sabotage our life. Sometimes we think, you know, you know, I can't stop for anything. But sometimes God will send an interruption our way. Now, now we all know what an interruption and a disruption to our life is. But I, but I also like to put a definition on some of the words. We know what they mean, but sometimes I might think about them a little bit different than you do. So that way we're on the same page. That way as I work through the sermon, you know, you kind of see where I'm going with this. An interruption means to disrupt or to stop something that is ongoing. To disturb something is to alter, upset, or interfere with something's normal function. I like to have a good working definition that way as we work through it. I'm hoping that as God spoke to me that he'll speak to you as well through this. It seems sometimes in life interruptions just seem to happen. They're not always welcome, but sometimes interruptions in life just happen. But the truth is, you know what, as much as we dislike them, interruptions are a part of life. They are, they're just a part of life. Interruptions are. Does anybody here, with a show of hands, anybody here say, I don't mind being interrupted right in the middle of something. I like, you know, I'm focused, you know, I'm right in the middle of something, and I don't mind to be interrupted at all. Would anybody? Really? Come on now, you're pulling my leg, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, but none of us like to be interrupted in the middle of something. We, you know, we like, we like to keep our focus on what we were doing. Not me. I don't like to be interrupted either. Now I say, as I've gotten older, I've gotten better. I didn't say I was good at it, but I've gotten better with uh, when, when I'm being interrupted. But I still prefer not for them to happen. We all like that. You know, we, we don't want them to really happen. We, you know, whatever the, you're doing, whatever the task is, the job that you're at hand, you know, you want to continue forward in what you were doing. There was a reason you were doing it. But as I, as I looked at these passages today, I was looking at the life of Jesus time and time again. How many times were interruptions a part of Jesus' ministry? All these things were interruptions in his life. They were important things, but they were still interruptions to his life. How did he handle those things? If I could handle them like Jesus, I'd be well on my way. 
I can't say that I always do. You think, well, you know, interruptions, you know, they just seem to be a part of Jesus' ministry. If you really look at Jesus' ministry, interruptions were his ministry. There was interruptions all through Jesus' life. Interruption after interruption came Jesus' way. Now, as I was looking at these passages, th there, was a, there was a lot of things that were speaking to me, and I certainly can't touch on all of them today. I, I, it's just like there was a lot of things jumping out at me, but I seemed to be gravitated towards one thing. When I, These people that I was reading the, the, in the passages that, that we just read, they, they had something in common. Desperation. They were all in desperation mode. That's why they came to Jesus. The woman with the flow of blood. The, uh, the ruler of the synagogue. His daughter, 12 years old. I mean, they were in desperation mode. That, that's why they came to Jesus. They had tried everything else. The woman had a flow of blood, blood for 12 years and she finally got to Jesus. 12 years. It took her 12 years to get there. There was a lot of other things. I'm sure the man with the daughter, he was a ruler of the synagogue. You know, he probably didn't want to humble himself and come to Jesus with a prestigious position that he had. But when times of desperation, you will do things that you normally wouldn't do. And that's sometimes that's what took us to come to Jesus. It had to be a time of desperation. There had to be something happening in your life. In a time of desperation, you will do things. You will do almost anything in a time of desperation to find the healing that you need. Even you will allow interruptions to your life in a time of desperation. You don't mind them then if it's going to serve your purpose and bring the healing that's needed in your life. It might not just be a physical healing. There's a lot of people that have a lot of other types of healings. There's a lot of things people don't talk about because they don't want everybody to know everything. And not everybody has to know everything about you. You know, there's some people, you meet them the first five minutes, you meet them, you know everything about them. They're just like, whoop, all this stuff, right? There's some people. And there's some people that you've known for years and you really don't know much about them, to be honest with you. Everybody's a little different. But I tell you what, in a time of desperation, you'll give up all of it. You'll walk away from everything to get what you need. When I got saved, I had to walk away from everything that I thought was normal in my life, even though I, it's not normal as I look back at it. I had to walk away from it. You notice about our lives, we like to have our plans fully intact. I got plans, you know, we, we don't want any disruption. I know what I'm doing. Okay, I know what that got me in life. You know what you're doing. All right. Okay, I'll just take you at your word. You ever notice we feel that any interruption that comes our way in life, oh, this can't be from God. I'm doing something good here. This can't be from God, this interruption. Okay. I think my view over the years has changed a little bit. And that's not a bad thing. Now, I don't like interruptions any better now than I did then. But when an interruption comes into my life now, I look for the purpose in it. God, I, I don't know what happened here. I was right in the middle of something and all this stuff just happened. I try to look for the purpose in it. God, what are you trying to say to me through this? You interrupted what I was doing for a reason. I ha thought I had it all figured out. And I, I, I feel like I know what I'm doing in this situation. And I, I think I'm pretty good at it. But you interrupted me for some reason. You know, not... Every interruption comes from God as well. Sometimes we think, you know, as I'm talking about it, sometimes interruptions, it's just our ADD kicking in. You know, we, 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 you know, our minds tend to wander all over the place. Sometimes it's not God, it's just us. But there's times that God is interrupting our life because there's a divine appointment there that he's trying to get us to. And for whatever reason, we don't want to be disturbed. I knock my notes over Sometimes we just don't want to be disturbed even though God has a divine appointment for us because we had plans and we were right in the middle of something. God is trying to redirect us sometimes. I really do. He's trying to redirect us. He's trying to change our course at times. That doesn't mean you were doing anything wrong necessarily, but God was trying to change your course. And we didn't want to allow him. 
You know these disruptions that God that God actually sends their way, they have a purpose. Sometimes it's to get our attention. God had to get my attention. Just like he's probably had to get your attention at times. God has had to redirect you at times. Thank God for the interruptions from God. Thank God that God has steered us in a different direction, even when we didn't want to. But what happens sometimes? When God is trying to redirect us, he's trying to do something in our life, is we put our do not disturb sign on. Well, I, I, I got a task. I need to get this done. I got to get it done. But the problem is many times we do it with God as well. We put our do not disturb sign on. Now, a do not disturb sign can be nice if you got in late to your hotel room and you hang it on the door. That's nice then. There, there's a time and a place for that. But when it comes to the things of God, we tend to do it too. We don't want to be disturbed. We think we got it all figured out. There's sometimes, you know, we just got to examine ourselves. Sometimes we're not as far up the road as we think we are. That's dangerous when we get thinking too much. What if, we, you know, as we put our do not disturb sign on, what if God put a do not disturb sign on his door? Where would that leave us? Thank God he doesn't do that. What I find is this too from my own personal experience and things that I've seen in my life. When interruptions come to your life, your true character is going to come out then. Your true character is not going to come out when everything is going smoothly. When those interruptions come, when somebody says something stupid to you, that's when your true character is going to come out. That's where you really are. You think you're way up the road here spiritually. But then when those interruptions happen and all those people come at you and all this stuff happens, what does your character say where you're at? See, sometimes we, we really have to have things happen so we can really see where we are, not where we think we are. You can do, you can do great. You know, most days I do fine. But then it's those other days. Those other moments. There's other things happen sometimes. You know, I try to be patient. I try to be patient, but then after a while, you know what I mean? It just all the resistance that comes against you, all the people, all the stuff, you know, you know like, raw. you just want to roar after a while. You know what I mean? Let, you just want to let it out. <sighs> then you're like, why'd I do that? Our true character comes out. When our plans and goals are disrupted, our response is important. Our response is important. But I also notice there's times of disruption in my life where I connect with God on a deeper level. Because i got to. Because it's out of my control now. There's things that are out of control. I have to connect with God on a deeper level because I can't do it. I can't fix it. I can't fix all this stuff. I can't do these things. I can't help these people. I can't do this. I can't do that. So you better connect with God. Otherwise, you're left out there all by yourself. That's a mess. We become stressed. Then what happens? After we're all stressed out, we've tried everything, we don't explode it on people, we don't do all this stuff, and yeah, what happens? Then we turn to God. I know where my help comes from, but then we turn to God. It happens. You know, in a time of desperation, we need, more, we need God more than ever. There's a lot of people that are going through a lot of things. There's a lot of people suffering out here. You would not believe it. But something that I think we forget. I think we know, but something we forget. We are hardwired to have a relationship with God. As a born-again Christian, I believe we all know that. Most Christians, if I were to ask them, I, I really believe this, most Christians, now, I'm not saying they have one, I think they desire one, I think they have a desire for a deep-seated faith. They really want more of God and less of them. Most Christians do. They really do. That's on one hand. But on, on the other hand, we don't want to be interrupted, we don't want to be disturbed. So which is it? You can't have both. 
You want a deep-seated faith, but you don't want to be interrupted in any way. You don't want to be disturbed. You got it all figured out. You know what? They kind of got to come together. You got to come together. Which is it? We want a relationship with God as long as it's on our agenda. I don't have time today. I, you know, I, I just don't feel very spiritual today. I don't have time today. Maybe tomorrow. I want more of God and less of me, but maybe tomorrow. It's not on my agenda today. I got too much happening, God. We want God to come around to our way of thinking. That's dangerous. That is very, very dangerous. We want a moving of God in our life as long as it's on our calendar. Wait a minute, God. Let me check my calendar. Okay. Maybe this coming Sunday. It's not, I, I got too much going on, God, right now. It's not, I don't have time. It's not on my agenda. You don't understand, God. We're telling God you don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on now. I, see, I hear some other people, too. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you don't say it, but you're thinking it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that we think that never come out of our mouth. Well, that's most people. There's some. Oop, oop, there it goes, you know. That's me at times. Now, I got a few questions for you. Kind of shift gears here. <laughs> All right. Do we have people in here? Anybody? I, I do. I do this. Who makes a list of to-do things? Okay. All right. All right. Some of you don't, but a lot of you do. There's a lot more. About three quarters of the hands went up. We make lists. Now, I like lists because they help me to remember what I'm supposed to do. I love to do, uh, make lists. Now, the second question is, who loves to do a list? Anybody here loves to do the list? Maybe some of you say, yeah, I guess it depends on the list, right? Yeah. <laughs> if in the middle of the list is lunch, yeah, hey, I'm for it, right? I'm, I'm good with it. Depends on the list. Who loves to do a list? Now, I'm going to ask another question. <laughs> Sometimes I get mad when I'm on the right there. <laughs> Anybody here have a, somebody who makes a list for you? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I seen a couple of the men hang up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <Ray. laughs> yeah. All right. Now, some of y'all acknowledge that you do have somebody who makes a list for you. Now, one last thing I'm going to touch on that. Who also ignores that list? <laughs> uh, some of the hands. Okay, okay. All right. So we're, we're being honest here. Being honest. Now, now what, why I brought that up is this. is Those lists can be helpful. Because goals and plans are good. There's nothing wrong with lists. I have them. But as I've looked at life, the most important moments in my life usually weren't on my calendar. They usually weren't on a list. The most important moments in my life. Not usually. There might have been a few, but most of those things, the most important moments in my life, they weren't on a calendar at all. Many of the things that are on your highlight reel from your life, if I asked you, to list three things that were a high point in your life right now. I guarantee you at least a few of those on your highlight reel of your life, in the, in the beginning, you never saw them coming. Not some of those things. As I see it, there are no chance encounters. Everything has a purpose. Everything has a purpose. My, my thinking has changed over the years, very much so. Now, Maybe you're a person who would say, you know, anytime somebody needs help, I don't mind helping them. I don't mind helping them. I'll stop at any time to help somebody. I'll give a person a shirt off my back. You know, if, they, if somebody knocks on my door, calls my house at midnight, I'm ready to help them. I, as I thought about that, I have a I have an answer to that if somebody says that. And my answer is baloney. Baloney. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. And I'll walk through. And you say, wait a minute here. Are you calling me? Right? No, no, no. I'm just trying to get us to think about our thinking. You know, of all God's creations, there's a lot of creations out here to God. You know, look at all the animals, all the, you know, the mammals, all these things. Far as I know that I can understand, humans <clears throat> are the only ones that think about their thinking. <laughs> a monkey might imitate us or do something, but I, I don't think he sits around and thinks about his thinking. 
He just said, you know, I see a banana, you know. <laughs> you know, he might think about that, or a dog said, you know, oh, I see the food dish, or whatever. But I find it hard to believe that anybody besides humans, any of God's creation, think about their thinking. That's why I'm bringing this up. All right, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Now, you know, if you said, I'm ready to help anybody at any time, I don't care what happens. All right, I'm going to ask you a question. i got just a three or four of them. It helps us to think about our thinking. When you received a phone call, you pulled your phone out, and you looked at it. Have you ever ignored it? Come on now. Have you ever ignored a phone call? Wait a minute. This is the same people just got done saying you would help anybody anytime. Call me at midnight. <laughs> but we just we just acknowledge everybody here has probably ignored a phone call one time or another. Have you ever got a phone call? And you didn't even look who it was. You just hit it and sent them straight to voicemail. I ain't got time. Oh, okay. I thought we were ready to help anybody at any time. <laughs> call me at midnight. Have you ever pulled your phone out and looked at the caller ID and said, oh, I'll call them back later. <laughs> okay, all right. See, maybe we're not as where we think we are. And this is my personal favorite. Have you ever looked, you got your phone and you pulled it out and you looked at the caller ID and thought, I'm not in the mood for all that today. <laughs> 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 come on now. Can I get amen somebody? Yeah. Come to me. All right, come on. See, see, sometimes we got to look at things in a different way to realize maybe we're not as far up the road as we think we are. You know, we like to grade ourselves on a curve. And as I said before, you know, being graded on a curve was wonderful in school, but it don't do a thing for me spiritually. You know, sometimes I just got to take an honest look at myself. Many times God wants to do a work in us and through us, but what happens is it comes disguised as an interruption. God is trying to use you and do something in your life. Very rarely does a moving of God start with a human agenda. I've heard people say, we're going to have revival. Not long planning for revival, but if you ain't got God in the midst and He ain't taking the lead, you can get up there and sing all you want, preach all you want. Revival ain't happening. It's got to be a moving of God. You can have an agenda, but rarely does a moving of God start with an agenda. It's got to be a God thing. Amen. All through the scriptures, you can see it's a God thing when the moving of God happens. God had a plan. He disrupted so many people in the Bible's life, life that uh, time and time again. Look, God interrupted Noah's life with the flood. What an interruption, right? Amen. God interrupted Abraham's life by telling him to leave his homeland. Time and time again, you'll see it all woven through the scriptures. God interrupted Moses' life with a burning bush. All these started with a God agenda, not a human agenda. God interrupted David's life with a giant named Goliath. You say, well, wait a minute, David did that. No, God quickened his spirit. God quickened his spirit. The prophet Jonah's life was disrupted. We know that he was swallowed by a great fish. And last, but certainly not least, another disruption, an interruption to someone's life. Mary and Joseph's life was disrupted by a baby named Jesus. Amen. Praise God for the interruptions that come our way. So the next time you have an interruption, be thinking, you know, what is God trying to do here? What is God trying to say? Just don't get all hot-headed. You know, as a young man, I was a hothead, but I, tr I try to be calm now. I try to, because I know God is trying to do something in me. I might not always see it. I might not always understand it. But God has a purpose. Amen. Even in interruptions. And disruptions to our life that we don't like. We don't like it at all. Jesus' life was full of interruptions. I don't want to miss a divine appointment simply because... I have my do not disturb sign out and I won't take it down. Every interruption sent from God has a purpose. It has a purpose. There's a season for everything and, every, and a time for everything in life. There is a time in life to have that do not disturb mode on. You know, we've seen Jesus, what it, at times it, the scriptures talk about Jesus went away to himself, away from the crowds. 
That was to gain strength from the Father. There was a time that he had to go away. That doesn't, you know, there's nothing wrong with pulling away sometimes. You have to have that time. You've got to find that time that works for you. You know, some people say, well, do this or do that, and, and it's wonderful if it works for them. But you've got to find what works for you. And, you know, it took me a while to do that, but I know what works for me. To have that do not disturb mode on. There is time. Well, let me just say this. If you're flying a plane that I'm in, I want you in do not disturb mode. If you're performing a surgery that I'm having that day, I want you in do not disturb mode. So there is a time and a purpose for it, but it can't be all the time. We hang this sign up. We don't want anybody to interfere. We, you know, we got it all figured out. We're afraid that we think somebody's just trying to tell us what to do. Nobody is trying to tell you what to do. Some people, you know, they, some people are, you meet in life, they're, they're very bossy. You know, what? They, some people do want to tell you what to do. I've learned a long time ago, you can't tell people what to do. They're going to do what they want. And if you say, you say, well, I'm the boss, they're going to listen to me. I'm in charge here. You know, if, if you make people do things that they don't want to do, as soon as you leave, they're going to turn around and do what they want anyway. You can't make people do anything. You can't make people do anything. You know, God doesn't make us do anything. He gives us choices. Now, those choices have consequences. If you make the wrong ones... You know, God has your best interest at heart. You know, you have to make yourself available to God to know His will, right? We're so busy, we're so all everything, we don't make ourselves available to God. How do we ever connect with God if we never make ourselves available? I remember one guy I was friends with. Uh, he had dated quite a few girls, but he just said, I ain't found the right girl. And, you know, he says, I just, I want to get married sometime. But the thing about it is I looked at his life, all he ever did was work. I'm like, maybe, maybe you ain't got married yet because you haven't made yourself available. You know, your life is so busy. <coughs> what he was doing wasn't wrong, but he's not making himself available to God. How is he ever going to find a relationship if he never made himself available? And the same thing is it with God. If you never make yourself available to God, how will your relationship ever strengthen? It's not going to. It's not going to happen. Now this week, as you go out, you're going to be dealing with life's problems. All the things that have come our way. And as I get ready to close here, I want you to remember something. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10. This is one of the verses I love. Book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10. It says this. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand so that we should walk in them. We are God's workmanship. Isn't that amazing? That means God created us uniquely. We're his workmanship. He took time. We are God's handiwork. Isn't that something? You know, Scripture also talks about we're his masterpiece. Masterpiece, me? <laughs> You know, I've heard the old saying, you know, yeah, you're a piece of work. I've been told that before, you know, but I've never been called a masterpiece. A piece of work, yes, but not a masterpiece. God looks at me as a masterpiece. Now, at times I have flaws. I have all these things in my life, and, you know, I'm sure maybe I don't reflect the Father the way I should. Maybe if I look in the mirror, I don't feel like a masterpiece. But it doesn't matter what I think about myself. It matters what God says. Who says God? What God says I am. Yeah. Who does He say that I am? He says I'm His handiwork. I'm His masterpiece. I'm His workmanship. And I think we forget that because we face all this garbage in the world. All these people are always trying to push you down. Somebody's always jealous over you. Somebody's trying to do this to you. Somebody's always talking about you. You can't stop people from talking. And you can't stop people from feeling the way about you that they do. Don't worry about it. Move on. Move on. You were created by God and for God. You have a purpose in this life. And you've got to make yourself available to God this week 
to know that, what it is, that divine appointment that God has for you. You've got to make yourself available to Him. I don't know where you're at with that, but you've got to make yourself available to Him with every head bowed and every eye closed. Maybe you're here today and you're not saved. You know, Dave, today can be your day of salvation. You don't have to wait any longer. You don't have to struggle with it. You don't have to think about it anymore. Today can be your day of salvation.